Welcome to Black and Orange Sports Buzz, your outlet for university, community, and nationwide sports talk. I'm your host, Olivia Weil, and joining me is a group of sports gurus ready to talk about what's going on in Finley and beyond. With me today is Mac Williams, Brady Stabler, and Andy Wolf. The UF football team is sitting at a comfortable 2-1 for the season with a big game against Ohio Dominican this weekend. How do you all think the Oilers looked so far this season? Excellent question. Uh, their play is kind of reflective in their 2-1 record. They've had two very decisive wins, one in the conference over Kentucky Wesleyan, one last week against William Jewell, but the loss against Ferris is definitely going to sting. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, Finley's done a great job on the offensive side of the ball so far this year, averaging 46 points a game, uh, racking up 531 yards a game. So the offensive side of the ball has not really been the issue so far. Um, they're also converting on 47% of their third downs, which yes. is a good conversion rate. Uh, so they're doing things well on the offensive side of the ball. Now defense yes. is another story. It's been an issue for a couple of years, right? Bringing back all of their nearly all of their starters from last year, obviously there was big expectations after the the postseason, getting to the postseason and making a little postseason run last year. Um, obviously, Ferris a great team, but I think they expected to um, hang around in that game a little longer than what they did. But also, I think that will fuel them going forward. And this game with Ohio Dominican, a big game. Um, obviously, last year that game for the conference, Finley went to ODU and lost. Um, pretty decisively they got handled and I think that'll be in the back of the Oilers mind uh, this Saturday. Kyle Dominican's going to come in with a little extra fuel too. Maybe unexpected last week they were the preseason picks to win the conference. They lose at home to Hillsdale a team that was picked third in the conference. Their starting quarterback left in the second quarter. Don't know if it's going to be their backup to go but they've got four tremendous wide receivers. A tough running game that's really going to challenge this UF defense. Yeah, I mean, ODU, their defense has been struggling. No, no question about it. They're allowing 427 yards a game. Should bode well for the Oilers. As we said, they're pretty prolific on the offensive side of the ball. But uh, we'll see how it shakes out. I think everybody knows the Oilers go as the quarterback goes. So, and so far this year, he's been a little up and down, 66% completion rate. Uh, Reese Jervis, but uh, three touchdowns, three interceptions. He's been pretty OK. Yep. Playing at home in this game, I think, is a big advantage yes. for the Oilers being here in Finley. Um, obviously, everybody knows about Jervis. He's very talented. But Finley has three or four guys that are very capable of running the football. Yes. And I think that balance offensively will really give them an edge, not only in this game, but going forward. I think I'll give you a little bit of something different. Michael Campbell is very, very quick back. The transfer, Richard Wilson, is a huge power back. They have four guys with three rushing touchdowns through the first couple of weeks. It's going to be really prevalent on the offensive line. Uh, Rob Keeves is talking about he loves ODU's front seven. And I think turnovers is going to be a huge battle. Finley has so three so far, and the defense wants more. Yeah, it's going to be just a typical football game. Whoever can win the line of scrimmage, uh, win the turnover battle, and complete third downs is going to win. Absolutely. Another side note on that, Ohio Dominican actually has great, they have great special teams. Logan yes. Neidhart from Hicksville High School, actually, where he graduated from a year ago, he won GMAC Player of the Year last year as a punter. Yeah. And I saw last week he had like a 67-yard punt. He's very talented. He's a D1 talent on special teams. So that is an advantage for ODU that Finley will have to try to match. And with Finley's kicking game, they were rotating kickers in and out, a couple extra points missed, a couple field goals missed. Get yeah, around the hot foot a kicker, but one missed field goal could end up costing you. Absolutely. So Finley High School football also has a big game this Friday against St. Francis de Sales. How do you guys think that this matchup will go? Finley so far has had one of the tough luck seasons. They're one in three, but their losses are two straight overtime losses in the first two weeks, and they just blew a 21-point lead to their rival, Fremont Ross. They're not going to be feeling good, and they're going to be very, very desperate for a win against one of the lower-tier teams in the conference. Yeah, I mean, if you're Finley, I mean, how do you come back from last you, week's you gotta. absolute debacle? I mean, you blow a 21-point lead yeah. to your arch rival, and... You've done this now a couple of times this year. I mean, Upper Arlington didn't blow it, but it was a tough loss in overtime. They've had some major heartbreak this year. I think they go as Tanner Rickle goes. For sure. He is their key, whether he can run the ball or throw the ball. I think that they need to run the ball more effectively in these coming games rather than That's just fair. rely on the pass. Playing in three close games, you know, and losing them all, that really stings. But that can be an advantage, and you can see that as an advantage also going forward. 
Um, St. Francis de Sales really hasn't had many close games this yeah. year. So you got to think if Finley can just hang around and get it close, you know, one possession game into the fourth quarter, then maybe they can hang around. And um, with that experience playing those three close games, maybe they can squeak one out. Finley High has one shutout to its credit in its win over Starry. But other than that, the defense has not really looked good. Ross was getting everything they wanted through the air, but it's going to be a little bit different mix for St. Francis. They've got a first-team all-conference running back back in Malachi Wise. He ran for over 1,000 yards last year, and he ran for 160 last year against Finley, so they're going to be tested again on the grounds. So from in-season to postseason, Major League Baseball kicks off their playoffs in two weeks. Any team that you guys hope to see make it in? For me, um, my team is already in, uh, the Red Sox. They are blowing it up this year. You're one of those people. Uh, winning, uh, yeah, I'm one of those people. Okay. Blowing it up this year, winning, pro gonna probably win about 110 games, I would assume. Easily. Easily. Yeah, one of the best teams I've ever had. But for me, in the AL wild card, I'm looking at the Tampa Bay Rays. They're five games back mm -hmm. of Oakland for that second wild card spot. People are sleeping on them a little bit because yes. they are in the division with the Yankees and the Red Sox, but I think the Rays can make a push. <laughs> I'm a Red Sox fan as well, actually. What? So, um, yeah. You're so, outnumbered. I'm outnumbered. It, I'm an Indians fan, it, for the record. But. It's been a great season for us. And, uh, you know, the Red Sox, they have been great. Um, it looks like that wild card game is going to be Oakland and the Yankees. The Yankees yeah. scare me as much as anybody. Aaron Judge has been on the shelf for yeah. almost two months. He's coming back now this week. Um, yeah, and yeah. sales coming off the DL. Absolutely. So back. Yeah, and if you're the Red Sox, right, how can you be comfortable with your pitching staff in the bullpen? The, the bullpen's and been shaky. And Porcello and Price, his starts in the postseason, has yes. been shaky at best. So they're going to need to get some production out of those guys if they want to move forward. Absolutely. And then looking at the NL, that wild card race is very interesting. I, you know, the Cubs have the best record in the NL. I, I kind of like them as the favorite. Mm -hmm. um, but also behind them in that division, the Brewers and the Cardinals also had very strong campaigns. It could be those two teams in the wild card game. Yeah, for me out of the NL, I'm looking at the Rockies. They're only a game back of St. Louis for that second spot. I think the Rockies have the tools. I think they have the pitching staff. But more importantly, I think they have the bats to do it. I think they can score runs. they got to get in first. I believe they're about a game or two. They're kind of hanging in the race. I think they just lost a tough walk-off to the Dodgers yesterday in extra innings. Yeah. My dark horse, I like the Brewers. Bullpen, Knable, Jeffress, Hader. If you can get them that, spot them that lead, Bullpens take you far, as we saw with the Royals, who had a very average starting pitching staff. And they've got the bats to do it. Yeah. A lot of it comes down to pitching, and when, it, when you think about pitching and starting pitching in particular, how about yeah. the Astros? You know, you oh. still got to look think at them. The Astros. Maybe the overall favorites, they're the team to beat. It was weird because the Cubs last year didn't feel like the team to beat, even though they were the defending champions. Astros still kind of have that magic going, and they've added, they've bolstered their rotation. Full year of Verlander, full year of Garrett Cole. Yep, and then also, you know, you can't forget, you know, you think about their pitching and then you got Altuve and Correa yeah. in the middle. Finally healthy. They've yeah. had their share of injuries. Their record might not look as flashy, but everybody's going to be healthy postseason wise. <laughs> sure. yeah. Well, a big thanks to Mac, Brady, and Andy for coming in today, and thank you all for watching the first episode of the semester. From the UFTV studios, I'm Olivia Weil, and we'll see you next time on Black and Orange Sports Buzz.